Hey guys, welcome back to the Giovanni Show. Today we have on Steven Glasser and Ty from camp. What's up, guys? What's up, Gia? What's up, fellas? Good, Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you, fellas. So, uh, what was your guys' favorite part of camp? We were at it a few weeks ago, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah man. Ty, why don't you go first? For sure. Um, I think so. Last year was my first year at camp. Um, so this was my second year. And this year we had a new camp. So it was everything kind of felt new in a sense. Uh, but it was really cool to see uh, just the same. A lot of familiar faces and some new faces. Like Gio, it was your first time at camp, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Gio was in my cabin, which was awesome. We had a pretty sweet group of guys. Um, and I would say, honestly, that there was a lot of parts that that are my favorite of camp but I think one of my favorite parts is just you know as a counselor you've got seven to nine people in your cabin uh, and to see the way that those relationships are formed and to see the, the way that these guys over the course of the week grew together closer as brothers um, in all of our different activities from archery to archery tag Geo is pretty good at that one um, to uh, to swimming to doing just all these different things uh, it's just cool to see these guys all the way from 14 to 18 years old uh, grow closer together as brothers and friends and uh, have conversation that is truly going to matter in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and so I would say that's my favorite part, man, just just seeing the depth of which you guys were willing to to go with each other and invest in each other's lives. And uh, yeah, to know that that's not something that just stays at camp, that stays with me and stays with you. And I know all the guys would say the same. So. That's my favorite part, man. I feel like for me, outside of Ty's accent and all the kids yelling, Ta the whole <laughs> week, uh, you know, that's obviously one of my favorite parts. But, you know, I, I've gotten to be a part of Camp Conquerors since it was founded in 2018 through Carson Wentz's A1 Foundation. And so I've kind of gotten to be on it from the ground up and see things from like, what we're just on paper of what would a camp look like? Like how cool would it be if we had a camp that looked like this to actually having that camp. And so every year I'm at camp, I'm just blown away. Um, one of the things that we started from day one uh, is doing an award ceremony on the final day. Uh, you got, you know, Gio, you got to sneak in, you know, the night before you had to leave a day early, but um, we give awards to every camper. So we give an award, based on some of their counselors, seeing them throughout the week, something um, about their personality, about the way they treat others. And it's just a fun way for us to encourage every camper and put a smile on their face. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, we, we do pieing every year. So if the campers get up at 7.30 <laughs> in the water, it's kind of our way to make sure campers are taking baths. So we're glad you got clean every morning, Gio. But uh, then the campers get to pie a staff member in the face. And uh, Gio, who did you pie this year? I just want to make I, sure that everybody knows. You, but uh, just for the record, Ty almost made it so I couldn't pie someone. He took way too long at a meeting. And we got up at like 7.45 oh. running to the lake. <laughs> You can't throw shots at me already on your podcast, Gio. That's not right. Come on. <laughs> we, I saw him come out of the, the meeting right as I was going to get a shower. After I jumped in the lake, I was like, really? You got up now? <laughs> That's, what was, hey, Gio, what was your award? What, what award did you get at camp? Uh, something about speaking. What was it? It was the... Uh, uh, the truth was it the truth the storytelling award yeah that one yeah because i uh shared my testimony yeah you did <laughs> that was amazing man yeah uh my mom was so proud of me <laughs> as she should be we were all proud of her, for sure yeah me and ty had fun at chapel <laughs> <laughs> and uh in uh cabin group was so fun because so the day that Carson came to camp we're in cabin group he comes out the back 
where we were doing our cabin group. <laughs> we're like halfway through. Then it goes, all right, if you guys are ready, I'll close up with a freighter. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, you know, the fans of your show, the people that listen to your show, you know, Bennett is is a character you know Bennett you you've connected before you ever met in person um but yeah you guys are just in the heart of deep conversation just talking about life and all of a sudden Carson appears and it's time to be done like we're done done it was game over man he was yeah it was over he was willing to close it all out for sure (laughs) he really did he goes all right if you guys are ready I'll close with a prayer (laughs) just cut you off right in the middle of your story too you know yeah um I, I could ask you Joe what was your favorite part of camp uh I don't know probably just like sneaking out and putting up the blue flag where the American flag was or like um we made everything fun like we just, we would be doing like dishes on the day that we had dishes and we, it, we would make so much fun out of it. That's awesome. Yeah. We tried to, uh, we were trying to find a marker to draw on the flag and then hang it up. So it was like going in the wind. We were trying to put food fellers on it. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love how your whole cabin you know, starts to talk like Ty. Ty, this is the people, where where are you from? And why are you in a car right now? I'm from Southwest Virginia, Virginia. uh, Grayson County, more specific. It's in the Appalachian Mountains. And uh, where I live, I can't get internet service at my house. So anytime I hop on a meeting with Steven or any of these guys or a Zoom call, uh, I got to drive about 30 minutes to get good internet service most of the time. So this is like my mobile, like podcast machine slash truck slash work vehicle here. Uh, it's definitely there's a lot of there's a lot of positives to it. That's one of the negatives for sure. <laughs> it's just not having any internet. I'll take the truck off though. I feel like it fully justifies your ability to save fellers. For sure, for sure, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. So uh, Ty, what was your favorite part about being a camp counselor? Mm, dang, Gio, with the good questions, man. Um, I think one of the special things about being a counselor is that we just get to do life with with the people in our cabin for a whole week. Um, like you said, Gio, you know, it's from the moment you wake up till the time you go to bed, like we're doing life together. We're doing, uh, we're eating breakfast together in the morning. We're doing activities throughout camp. Uh, we're eating lunch together. We're doing dishes together. Uh, I think it's just a really cool picture of like how we were designed to live and actually do life with people and to share with you guys. And I think when, when we do life that way, we get to know people on like a lot deeper level than we would just spend an hour or two, an hour or two here or there. Uh, It's a really special thing to be able to like live life with a group of guys for a whole week. Uh, And then when you add that into being able to spend time with the whole rest of the camp, you know, after you leave after six days, I don't know, you just, you feel like you're a family with these people, you know, and you feel like you've been able to, to share relationally in a way that um, could take years otherwise. Uh, And so I think that's my favorite part about being a counselor is just, it really shows, uh, I think how we're designed to live, which is to invest everything we have relationally. Uh, We get to know guys like you, Gio, and then our relationships span beyond camp into stuff like this, which I could have never imagined. In a million years, I'd be on a famous podcast with a dude like Gio. Uh, so it's just really cool to see the do- the doors that the Lord opens through that. Yeah. And the the whole trip not only gave me better friendships, but brought me closer to God. And just the daily chapels twice a day was just amazing. And Stephen, I know you delivered some of the messages. It was, you did so good. Oh, thank you. What was it like to deliver the messages to uh, all the kids? Man, it's it's one of my favorite things. I, you know, I've done a variety of of different ministry things for you know full time for the last nine or ten years, um, and so 
you know, I've been able to speak at a church. I've been able to speak at retreats. I've been able to speak at conferences um, for people of all ages. I recently did a men's, like a men's retreat. That was like the average age was 70. I don't know why they had me come, but um, you know, for me to be able to come out to camp is, is one of my favorite things. One, everybody's coming from different walks of life. You know, our the population at camp, you guys all have some sort of medical issue that you've overcome or that you're living with and walking through. And so, you know, it's not like everybody's coming from one church and from one place. Everybody's coming from different places. Most kids don't know each other before they come to camp. And so for me, that's like a challenge, but I love it. And just to see your guys' growth throughout the week, um, you know, just to be able to put things at a in a, in a way that can help you understand, you know, using memorable stories and, and just talking about, you know, stories from the Bible. I think the Bible can sometimes become stale to somebody, you know, if you grew up in church or maybe you, you didn't grow up in church, you look at the Bible and you're like, this is an old book that has no value, but realistically, you know, God inspired it. And the stories in it aren't just stories, but they're real things that happened and they can impact us today. And so I love to try to bring those things to life um, to you fellers uh, the best I can. So I love it. It's intimidating when I got just a room full of beady little eyes on me. And, you know, I, I don't say this often, but it's, it's the counselors that are falling asleep. So we got to talk to them about, about that. You guys are locked in. Yeah. Um, what was your guys' favorite activity from camp? Hmm. I'll go first. I, I, might, I might steal something, but for me, it was wheelchair basketball. I loved it. We had um, a group called Prairie Grit that donated a bunch for the week. And uh, one, it was just super fun, but also there's a couple campers that are in wheelchairs and for them to be able to play at like everybody else's level and just to be able to, um, you know, not have like any sort of disadvantage because this is like their domain you know it was really fun to see them light up um and rumor has it you know geo you're you're a pretty good shot too no <laughs> dom actually he came out of camp he's like he's like you know um my favorite activity was wheelchair basketball he was like i suck at regular basketball but when i'm in a wheelchair i'm just different he <laughs> was a facilitator in wheelchair basketball he was like the pass first point guard that got everybody else buckets you know so that was pretty awesome yeah i was like uh i was just getting all the assists i think i had like 30 assists by the end yeah you were like steve nash or rondo back in the day in the day of pass first point guards <laughs> Yeah, but then uh, I saw I saw Maya and I ran out of the wheelchair and I went I went and sat with Laura and Maya. <laughs> Love it, man. Yeah, you guys gotta come see the new house. Hey, absolutely, man! A new house and what you got a new dog too, right? Yeah, Riggs. He's huge. <laughs> <laughs> he looks monstrous. I get to come in a week. I get to see you in your house in, in like eight days. Yes. Yes. It's going to be a party. Ty, Ty, what was your, what was your favorite activity? My favorite activity was probably archery tag. <laughs> so archery tag, think like paintball. Oops, sorry, my phone keeps falling off. Think like paintball, <laughs> but replace the paintball guns with like bows with like big marshmallows on the end so they're like you shoot each other like you would in paintball but it's like archery so it's it's really fun uh it's like kind of has the paintball set up where you have the big things to hide behind in the different strategies at the team game which made it really fun and uh yeah so i think archery tag was was probably my favorite for sure a uh, close second was wheelchair basketball we had some really fun games, so I'm trying to think through everything. Um, wheelchair basketball was really fun. And then, I don't know, I liked all of our big camp games with the water balloon stuff, and, and some of that stuff was really fun. I liked them all. 
Yeah, I liked everything, but I really liked uh, shooting the rifles, shooting the uh, the twenty twos. Nice. Yeah, that was so fun. Yeah. I also liked archery tag, just because you know I would I I didn't hit anybody, but we still won, and I acted like I did something the entire game. <laughs> That is, that is the, you just summarized my entire sporting career. <laughs> my uh, Dom was, uh, you were like the last one, Steven, and Dom shot you and to, to like win the whole thing. And he was like, I shot Steven. <laughs> why, yeah, why does that make him so happy? I'm, I think there's something deeper going on here. <laughs> he was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> He got he he got the winning shot, so we'll give it to him. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Yeah, I also liked uh, swimming with all the guys on that big lily pad thing. That was so fun. The uh, the basketball, the in water basketball, is is a good time too. I don't know if you I don't know if you guys participated in that madness, but that that's quite the quite the fun too. I missed out on that for sure, man. I missed it. <laughs> um, I I got to camp while uh, what were you doing, Ty? You were in the water with canoes and like what was it, canoe soccer or something like that? Yeah, we had just finished up playing canoe soccer, which ended up mostly just in everybody turning over their canoes <laughs> and trying to swim their canoes to the side of the pond. <laughs> yeah i i was sad i missed that because it sounded like fun with all the canoes flipping and everything i heard it was more of like swimming was <laughs> is ty still here I sorry so. i'm good I, yeah. I cut out for a second there <laughs> You can apologize to all your podcast listeners because now they know where I'm from and they'll they'll understand my yeah. internet situation. I'm I'm sorry for my uh, Virginian friend. He's in a car. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, Stephen, I saw you got to do water baptisms. What was that like? Yeah, that was so fun. At at junior high camp, we had a few campers that you know, had made a decision that they wanted to dedicate their life to Jesus, you know, accepting what he did, you know, on the cross for them. And, um, and so the way that that's been done ever since Jesus was alive was to be baptized. And, and so I got to be a part of five of those. And so it's so fun that the campers kind of got to share, you know, what their life, you know, how God's changed their life essentially. Um, and then in front of all the campers, they, are, are baptized they go under and come back up and it was so um yeah so fun to to be a part of that it was the first five ever at camp conquer so it was it was a blast and i know you you recently got water baptized didn't you yeah i got baptized dedicated my life to god and uh my life is better because of it love it come on man that's amazing yeah so uh uh, what does AO1 Foundation mean to you guys? I can go first. Um, you know, AO1, you know, Carson and I have been friends since he was the quarterback at NDSU. And even before that, we knew each other. We played sports against each other in high school. You can make your decision on who is better. Um, but, <laughs> you know, so as Carson, and I got to know each other and he went to the NFL and he had this dream and this desire to give back. <clears throat> um, it was definitely something that I was eager to be a part of and I got to be with camp and then have been on staff ever since. And so it just means a lot. I think the work and seeing kids like you, um, Bennett, you know, Mari, all the kids from camp, the kids that have been on hunting trips and, you know, obviously we have our food truck on Indian and Philly and work in Haiti, but 
just to see the impact that it's made on kids and on their families is what's most significant to me. You know, I've gotten the privilege to know so many of you. I've gotten the privilege to take you to a Colts game with your family and do some fun things, playing football on the field with blue before the game, all those things. You know, I've had so many awesome experiences, but the best part of it has been um, meeting real people that have gone through really hard things. And hopefully we've impacted you, but I know I've been impacted. Um, so I would say it, just the mission itself. Um, I love what we get to be a part of. I love that we get to, to hang out with kids that have had really rough situations in their life um, and hopefully provide a little joy, a little encouragement, a little hope, reminding them that they're valued, loved, seen. Um, and so what it stands for, what we do, uh, it, there's nothing like it. I love it. That's so good, man. Let's see. Well, I think, I think the thing, can you repeat the question, Gio? It was what we love most about the A01 Foundation. Is that right? What does the A01 Foundation mean to you? Means, means that's a great question, man. Um, I think, I think what's been really cool for me is I've, I've just transitioned uh, from being a, a college pastor, working with the same organization that Stephen used to as well, uh, to working for AO1 within like the past two-ish years, started volunteering, and then it's become more and more of a role. And I think what's really cool about it is just sitting down with Carson and Maddie um, and talking with them. Like it's become so apparent to me that all the things within our organization aren't just like for show or to just do, uh, but like it's their heartbeat. And it's the overflow of God's heart for the world. And so, like, I think the different the different tiers that we have. So we have our our food truck, we have our outdoor foundation, um, and it's just yeah. And then the Haiti Sports Complex. And and what's cool about all those things is that they're all just an overflow of God's heart and an overflow of Carson and Maddie's heart in different areas of their life that they want to love people and. The thing that I love most about the A01 Foundation is the fact that all of those things aren't just like a one-stop shop. They're not just like a one-time uh, come into somebody's life and then just leave them good luck with the rest of your life. All of those things are intentional and they're consistent over time. Uh, I think in our outdoor foundation, you know, like we'll, we'll come in and we'll take kids on hunts and fishing trips. Uh, but it's not just for the goal of, of just, you know, a one-time, four-day trip. Uh, but we want to truly build a relationship and do life with people. And I think we, we just, as AO1, that's been the thing that has stood out the most to me, is just to see, I think all significant change really happens over the course. I think that next part is going to be really good. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Am I back? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, happens over the course of time. And I think every, every ministry that we have, it's built for the long haul. Um, and it's focused on investing in people's lives. And I think it matches up with God's heart. And so like Stephen said to, you know, the people, a lot of times in life, you know, we think we're going to come in and have an impact on people. And what I've found for the most part is, is every time I go to camp or every time I go on a hunt uh, with kids like UGO, I normally leave just as much, if not more impacted uh, by you and the people that I'm doing life with uh, than I feel like I even leave an impact on. And so it's just cool how, how the foundation is geared in a way uh, that I think values eternal things over just temporary things. Yeah, I love that, man. Um, how did you guys get into doing A01 Foundation? Yeah, I'd, I'd briefly mentioned, but, you know, I'm from the same hometown as Carson. Um, I'm two years older than him. My first well, memories are his brother, Zach, being an absolute legend at football and, and baseball in, in our hometown. Um, and so, Carson at that point was Zach's little brother. And then all of a sudden Carson got real good. And so, um, so I remember being a senior in high school playing baseball and Carson was playing first base or DHing 
for his high school. We were crosstown rivals. Um, but then in college, when he was the quarterback, I had just gotten to know a bunch of football players and just, you know, developing friendships with them. And our main thing was I would invite them over to my apartment. We would just eat food um, and, you know, talk life and talk faith. And Carson invited himself into that. I was on the field after a game one day and he's, he said, when am I going to get invited for dinner? And so uh, we made it happen and kind of the, as they say, the rest is history. He and I just became friends. Uh, we just really helped us grow, uh, each other grow through a lot of different things. And when he was drafted, I, I went out to Philly for a game those first couple of years before the foundation started. And, um, and so once we had camp, he asked if I would be a part of it. And I said, yes. And then a year later, I moved out to Philly for a couple of years um, and have been working with the foundation since then. <laughs> love that man um so my story is definitely a little bit different so I worked for a college ministry and we had our big national meeting in uh Springfield Missouri and so I went there and it was like a training like a week-long training and I was standing in the food line and there was a guy in front of me that had like a similar hat on uh and I just started talking to him and long story short, we quickly found out that we were going to be best friends. Uh, his name's Cole Sherbinsky, and he runs the Outdoor Foundation uh, in for A01. And uh, we just, four hours later, we hadn't moved. We just talked stories and traded stories about deer hunting and what God had done in our lives. And it was just, we knew instantly, you know, that we were going to be best buddies. Um, and so fast forward, Cole gets toward the end of that internship year, and uh, he ends up getting hired by A01 to run the, the outdoor ministry foundation uh, or outdoor ministry part of the A01 foundation. And uh, over the course of the past years, I started volunteering on some different hunts and then I became an intern. And uh, now I don't know what my exact title is called. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but I, I take kids from the Indianapolis area and we do a lot of hunting trips all the way from Kansas to New Mexico, all the way to the East coast. Um, and so that's how I ended up getting involved was just friendship and relationship with Cole. And it's transformed into getting to know guys like Steven, uh, Zach and Cole Davis, Ryan and Carson. And it's just been a really awesome ride, man. I feel like we're just getting started. So. Yeah. And you mentioned those hunting trips. I think I'm going on one with you and Ty, I just found out uh, I have two weeks off in the fall and it lands right on the dates that we are looking at. So, uh oh, all right, man. We may have to hop on a call here after the uh, after the podcast is over and talk a little bit. Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Yes, sir, dude. It was an absolute honor, man. Thanks for having us, Gio. Yeah, it's our our privilege. This is a dream come true to be on the Giovanni show. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, guys.